Okay, now it's time to do the kind of ultimate internal compositing, like little spot treatments. And to do that, I'm going to build a new layer on top of all my cloud layers. So it's layer eight. My clone stamp layers, I like to label. So I'll change their name. The photo P is not letting me easily. So I just call it clone stamp. And I always clone stamp on a new layer because I don't like um, erasing pixels as I paint, right? So if I do it on a new layer and then I click the clone stamp tool, which is underneath the brush tool, and I use normal mode at 100% opacity, and if I change my source to current and below, and then I need to make sure that anything I use option to select is fair game here. So if I'll zoom into some of my problem areas, it's like these horns, right? I don't want to clone stamp the sky. I want to only clone stamp the cloud stuff. So I'm going to turn off my sky layers, both my folder and that. So I just have empty space. So that way, when I use the clone stamp, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, a little bit softer edged. And if I hit option, come on, work for me. Option, it changes to a bullseye and it targets what I'm going to clone stamp with. And then I just paint with it. I just click and it will stamp that texture on wherever I want it, wherever I think I might need it. Wait, what about the size of your tools and stuff? So I, I set them. So I set it at 0% hardness and I set it at What did I say? About, you know, 118 pixels. It's what I've been using for all the tools because I'm at 72 pixels per inch. Okay, so now if I turn the sky back on, it fills those in pretty opaquely and I can kind of see more trouble areas like this back edge and the selection kind of travels with me. And I'm basically overusing it, using it a little too much. Because it's on its own layer, I can erase away from it and not worry. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn the sky back on and I'm gonna start erasing from my clone stamp layer. So you can see all the little spots I used it to fill in. And actually, maybe like maybe before I erase, I'll use the smudge tool. And just push them back and forth a little bit. That's acting really weird. So now I'll use the eraser. It's at a 51% opacity. All right. Now, other things like hard edges I need to worry about. Those look good. Might want to erase a little bit more from here. So you can just go through your layers and see which ones are helping the illusion and which ones aren't. We want to suggest the creature but not be a slave to it. First, we want something that's believable. You can play with the opacity of your different layers. So this is the one that's a little, a little too hard edged. So 
So I'm going to smudge it. Whoops. Ah, I'm having the problem you guys are having. It's affecting the layer it's not supposed to affect. So I'm going to say save as a PSD. And then I'll try a different technique. So instead of the smudge tool, that's the layer, layer six. I'm going to use my soft edged eraser. So now there's multiple ways to get the same effects. I was just going to smudge it in on itself, but soft edged eraser can give me that same kind of control. And remember your tool options. If you want more fine, fine control of your smudge tool, just make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to take this layer's opacity down a little bit. Yeah, maybe not. When I try and clone stamp, it keeps telling me select a source by holding down Alt or K and click. Yeah, so you have to you have to target where you're copying from before you can start copying. So for, for my computer, that's the, the Alt Option button. You get a little, this is the practice using Clone Stamp. You get a little uh, bullseye or crosshairs target. You click there, and then you move to where you want to copy it to when you start painting. So you need to target where you're stamping from first. OK, so you can see that that Clone Stamp fills in some of those gaps. And then you can play with its opacity, and you can erase away from it if you want. All right, so I have a pretty soft-edged cloud, somewhat suggestive of my creature. All right, though without the creature there, yeah, I think you maybe could make it up, but it helps to have the little creature in the corner. And I have a nicely layered gradated sky behind that's built up of lots of layers of gradation, but ultimately is made to look believable. Might take down the blue just a little bit more. Now it's ready to save and turn in. I'm going to stretch that gradation a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to save it as a PSD. I want all those layers preserved. That's in my downloads folder. And then I'm going to save it as a JPEG. So I go to export as JPEG, and that's because it fills a, a rectangle. Then I can go to Canvas. on our canvas window. Ooh. And as long as you get something turned in by midnight tonight, some sort of work in progress, then you can keep working on it and resubmit. So try to pay attention to those deadlines in the course outline. And we will do a quick a cr presentation critique of it here. And I scroll down to the bottom of the directions. I hit reply, just like it says. Start with my name. 